Hello, everybody, and welcome back to SFF180. This is another editorial edition of the show. I appreciate you joining me. Uh, in the event that you were not anywhere near social media on Thursday, <laughs> then you missed the latest uproar. This was this week's Someone is Wrong on the Internet moment, and I'm referring specifically to the furor that erupted on Twitter, mainly on Twitter, uh, in response to an article written by Ruth Graham that was posted on the Slate website, uh, essentially criticizing adults who enjoy reading young adult fiction. The, name, the title of the article is Against YA. Like I said, the, uh, the author is Ruth Graham. And the uh, thematic thrust of the whole thing can basically be summed up as, if you are an adult and you read young adult fiction, you should be embarrassed. It's time that you grew up, put away childish things, and moved on to the greater complexities of adult literature. Uh, now, like I said, the massive, massive backlash uh, against the article. Uh, but what exactly does the article say? What does it get wrong? Does it get anything right? Um, I think a little, but very little. Uh, but what does it get wrong, and why does it get it wrong? Why, why is Graham wrong, specifically in what ways? Um, it isn't just the basic question of, look, you've got no business telling people who, uh, that they shouldn't read things that uh, they enjoy reading. You know, hey, live and let live, right? Uh, but Graham roots her entire piece, I think, in not merely some incorrect and unsupported assumptions, but also in the fact that I don't believe that she is sufficiently widely read in the material that she is attacking in order to be making the conclusions that she is making based upon her premises. First off, I reject wholeheartedly, and I speak as a critic, I'm someone who's been doing this, I've been doing sfreviews.net 13 years next month, and then before that, when I was much younger, I was reviewing uh, back, back when there were fanzines, back when those were a thing, before the days of the World Wide Web. Uh, so I have quite a bit of experience under my belt, book reviewing, and so I speak not only as a general reader and a fan, but also as a very experienced critic um, when I say that I personally utterly reject this sort of critical snob notion that you see in some circles that there is this, this binary thinking that dictates that there is an, an, an inviolable Maginot line uh, between popular and artistic. That if something resonates with a large audience, uh, becomes a commercial success, uh, finds great love amongst you know, the great unwashed, it is artless by its very nature. Meanwhile, art is this thing that is uh, only reserved for those of us of uh, intellectually superior stripe, a greater experience, greater education, greater academic background and understanding, more a scholarly experience, and we are the ones, we elites, we self-styled elites, are the ones who only uh, truly appreciate real art, and then it is up to us to lecture the idiot masses on what that art is and what they should be enjoying rather than the stuff that they actually are enjoying. Um, the problem with putting yourself in an ivory tower like that is I found ivory is a really terrible material to make plumbing out of, which is why ivory towers usually get backed up with so much crap. Now, the basic criticism Graham has here of young adult fiction, which, by the way, she says, look, I'm not condemning young, young adult fiction for young adults. Uh, but again, if you're a proper adult, uh, no, you should, you should be beyond all this stuff. Her main criticisms are, first off, that it presents an uncritical view of young adult life. Characters are always presented in, you know, a sympathetic manner. Fancy that, right? You know, a book that has characters that readers can identify with. Who ever heard of such a thing? Uh, that the teen experience, the young adult experience, is not examined with any of the complex insights that only come from greater adult experience. That's, that's another thing. Uh, and that finally, uh, the fact that these books usually have satisfying endings, uh, you know, the, everything is wrapped up in, an, if not necessarily a happy ending, definitely one that is satisfying to the reader. Uh, these are the reasons that uh, Ruth Graham thinks that adults should find young adult fiction, um, you know, completely artistically, you know, undernourishing. Uh, she seems to think that we should only, as adults, want to read fiction that accurately reflects our own experiences in life. As she says, it, it is a much more complex world out there, and so a wide variety of experiences uh, could be relatable to adult readers. And some of those 
could cross over into themes and ideas and stories that are being expressed in the young adult category. Okay, so to give you guys, uh, I got my laptop right here, an ex a specific example of what I think is Ruth Graham's complete lack of insight, uh, not only into the fiction that she is criticizing, but the motives of adult readers who come to this fiction, or the ability of adult readers to process this fiction in the way she thinks they should. Uh, let, me, uh, let me quote a, a verbatim, a passage from the article here. Here is where I think she seriously doesn't get it. Listen to this. Uh, she goes on and say, uh, Crucially, YA books present the teenage perspective in a fundamentally uncritical way. It's not simply that YA readers are asked to immerse themselves in a character's emotional life, that's the trick of so much great fiction, but that they are asked to abandon the mature insights into that perspective that they supposedly have acquired as adults. She's talking about adult YA readers, right? When chapter after chapter in Eleanor and Park ends with some version of, quote, he'd never get enough of her, the reader seems to be expected to swoon. But how can a grown-up, even one happy to be reminded of the shivers of first love, also not roll her eyes? Okay, I'm going to unpack this here for you guys, but first off, I'm just going to point out that Graham's entire dismissal of the artistic value of young adult literature for adult readers is based, at least in this article, on her assessment, negative assessment, of the merits of exactly two young adult books. One of them is The Fault in Our Stars, you know, the current very popular sort of, you know, uh, cancer love story weeper uh, coming out as a movie, in fact, right now. And then also this book, Eleanor and Park. Uh, these are two big YA uh, mainstream YA bestsellers. They're not, uh, you know, YA genre bestsellers, not YA, SF, and fantasy. Those, that category, uh, SF and fantasy, she just, uh, she um, summarily dismisses as not being a serious literature in any way. And so that's another way in which she completely fails as a critic. But this is literally as ridiculous as someone saying, look, all adult contemporary American literature is total crap right now, unworthy of your attention. And to prove it, let's talk about this one book by James Patterson and this other book by Dan Brown. Now, take the passage that she quotes from Eleanor and Park specifically. Okay, if you have a character here, let's say we have the male romantic lead, and he is going googly-eyed over his love, right? Now, to a 17-year-old, and we've all been 17, except for maybe those of you watching this who are not yet 17, in which case, listen to my greater adult wisdom, because it's greater. Um, yeah, when you're 17 years old, you are indeed in the full flower of your romantic delusions about life, right? I mean, that's the age when you really be, you find somebody, you fall in love. There is absolutely nothing more important in the entire history of the world than this moment right now between us, and it's going to last forever. And yeah, that's the age when you're completely into that. And so, indeed, a 17-year-old reader might read this bit in El Norm Park. Uh, you know, he, he would identify, uh, you know, uh, with this character's... Um, just doe-eyed love for his young lady, and, um, you know, relate to and enjoy the book on that level. But now, let's look at uh, Graham's imagined adult reader, who looks at this thing and says, now she says, you would look at this, but yeah, you might be reminded of the shivers of first love, but wouldn't you also roll your eyes? Now, how is it that Graham seems to think that this is an example of the failure of the book to convey an accurate adult understanding of being in love at this point in your life. It seems to, in fact, be evidence of exactly the opposite. She is arguing that this is why young adult fiction cannot convey anything of a relatable emotional nature that cannot convey emotional truth to an adult reader. But if an adult reader can read that passage and accurately understand not only the feelings of the 17-year-old in the story, but also call upon your own adult experience to kind of smile sadly, remember, yeah, you know, you're, you're kind of naive at that age, and that's how it happens. It's sweet, though. Um, it, 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 but it was that time. Um, you find out when you get in the real world and you get bitten a few times. It's not all necessarily like that. If you can read that and understand it, then the passage hasn't failed. So by her own chosen example, uh, Ruth Graham has basically refuted her entire thesis. This thesis being 
that young adult fiction cannot accurately convey emotional truth to a reader with real adult experiences, an adult reader. Now, I read some other tweets that uh, I think made some really astute criticisms uh, of this article. Neil Gaiman uh, noted that it was deeply ironic that Graham would criticize young adult literature for the reasons that she does. You know, again, relatable, sympathetic characters, um, you know, maybe a little bit of emotional melodrama, happy endings. And then she goes on to praise Charles Dickens um, as, you know, the sort of writer that does deliver a satisfying adult reading experience when Dickens happily traded and, in fact, established a lot of those tropes, those very tropes that she was criticizing. Uh, someone else, uh, several other readers, in fact, I saw, uh, made the uh, very excellent point that not only do things like relatable characters and happy endings and a general sense of getting good entertainment value, uh, even if a book is simply escapist in nature, um, not only does that not, by definition, strip that book of any serious consideration of literary worth, but by the same token, a book that is challenging, obscure, um, you know, envelope-pushing, um, with unresolved endings and with a great deal of intellectual ambiguity and moral complexity, you know, these kinds of things, those factors do not automatically confer literary greatness upon a book simply by being there. Finally, Graham wraps up her article with a pure logical fallacy, the appeal to consequences logical fallacy. Google it. It's an actual logical fallacy. Here's what she says. But the YA and new adult boom may mean fewer teens aspire to grown-up reading because the grown-ups they know are reading their books. Oh, it may mean that. Well then, I guess we should all be incredibly embarrassed about what may happen if we as adults enjoy reading the occasional young adult book. Everything Graham writes, every point that she tries to make, her entire thesis is based on exactly these kinds of unfounded assumptions. It's an embarrassing piece all the way through. And that's why the only person who really has anything to be embarrassed about where this article is concerned is Ruth Graham. Thanks everybody for joining me. I'm TMW. As always, if you enjoyed watching this, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And I will be back very soon with more reviews, more Mailbag Monday, all kinds of great stuff as usual. And until I see you next time, whatever the hell you choose to read, happy reading.